Thank you for joining us, Carrie. Uh, first question, how did this project start? This project started as a, as a response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call for commemoration initiatives uh, that was issued, I think, back in 2010. And it, then I sort of spent some time trying to imagine what I could make to tell the the stories of what happened to residential schools in this country. I realized that to tell the story of residential schools, I was going to have to to bring lots of stories together, lots of pieces together, and that's uh, that's how I came up with this this concept of gathering items from residential schools across the country and making them into the form of a blanket. Uh, now, what led you to select the woven blanket as the inspiration for the form of this piece? I think that the symbol of a blanket has a lot of important connections to the purpose of a project like this. We, we all have a history and a purpose for blankets. We wrap our babies in them when they're born. We wrap our loved ones in them when they when they pass on. And they're a sense of comfort. They're a sense of protection. There are over 800 objects in the witness blanket. How did they come to be a part of the piece? We, we undertook a pretty extensive um, collection process where we had a team of people who were traveled the country. Um, a lot of the times we followed along the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's um, events that were happening. They were holding regional and national events in various parts of the country. So we would go there, um, and then the team would meet people, and then we would arrange to go back to their communities um, and, and ask individuals and communities to consider making contributions to the blanket. Can you tell us about the, a few of the objects that carried emotional significance to you? There's a lot of different ones that carry um, significance to me for, for various reasons. Um, two of the pieces on the blanket are braids, and those are my sister's braids. And when I came up with this concept, they agreed to grow their hair for the duration of the process of collection and then cut their hair in ceremony to contribute to the blanket in honor of my father, but also in honor of all residential school survivors because that was a shared experience for many, where the first day that they arrived, their hair would be cut or shaved. That's a one that's very visceral. There's also a shoe that is on the blanket that has personal significance to me because it was one of the first pieces that was brought to me. And when I got it, the person who gathered it, when when she brought it, she sort of told me about how her sleep had been disturbed for the last little while while she'd had the shoe with her in her travels. And so she wanted to give it to me and tell me that so that I knew that there was there was something different about the way that she felt when the shoe was around her. And so when I took it out and held it, I could feel, um, I could feel something. I, I felt a, a wave of emotion, and um, and so my response, because I'm not, I'm an artist. I'm not a, I'm not a medicine person. My response was to to speak to the shoe, and so I did that each day for the next week, and I would hold it and talk about what I was doing, and talk about the project, and I could sort of feel inside me, my emotions starting to change and, and the, the relationship with this shoe develop. And what it taught me was that I was going to have to hold each of the items that came in, regardless of where they came from, and regardless of what I knew about their history, with a certain level of respect. Um, and, and I think that was a really important part of a lesson for me to learn early on in making the blanket, because... Um, I knew going in I was going to have to be careful with and be really respectful of uh, survivors and their stories. But I hadn't considered how important those objects would be. And that shoe that came in early taught me, uh, taught me to think about the objects as just as important as the, the stories and the people who gave them. It's a great story. Thank you. Uh, lastly, what do you hope people take away from their experience of viewing the witness blanket? I think that the experience that people take away will vary depending on people's own experience. Um, for, for survivors and intergenerational survivors, I think the experience 
I hope that the experience is something like what I had, where I started to see the connection between all of these pieces and all those stories. Um, and it shifted the narrative from from being something that happened to me or my father to being something that happened to all of us. And there's a there's a coming together, um, there's a solidarity in in seeing it as collective experience. And I think that's part of the healing process. Great. Thank you very much, Carrie, for uh, giving us a call and sharing your thoughts about uh, this great piece, The Witness Blanket. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.